Hi there. Welcome to this talk, which is going to be about the technical architecture group within W3C. And welcome to the virtual advisory committee meeting. I hope you're all keeping well. I'm going to share my screen. So, Today we're going to talk about the technical architecture group. I'm going to give you a brief update about what's been going on with us and hopefully leave you with some information about our activities and how best to engage with the tag um, going forward. So first of all, what is the tag? Um, for those of you who've been participating in W3C advisory committee meetings for a while and the W3C community for a while, this information won't be anything new to you, but uh, I'm gonna go through it in any case. So the first of all, the, uh, the tag is a group made up of uh, uh, people from different organizations. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's an elected, partially elected and partially appointed body. Uh, we have one permanent chair who is is uh, Sir Tim. Um, we have Rawson from Microsoft, myself from Samsung, uh, Alice from Google, Kenneth from Intel, Peter Lentz, who also co-chairs, uh, who's an invited expert, uh, David Barron from Mozilla, Hadley Beeman, uh, who's an invited expert um, and also works for the UK government, uh, Yves Lafon, who's our staff contact, Sangwon Moon from Odd Concepts, and finally, Tess O'Connor from, uh, from Apple. So what is the TAG? W3C TAG is a, it's a special group that's chartered to document and build consensus around the principles of web architecture, to interpret and clarify these principles where necessary, uh, to resolve issues around general web architecture issues that are brought to the TAG, um, and to help coordinate cross-technology architecture developments inside and outside of W3C. So that's all from our, from our charter, which you can uh, get from reading that as well. So what are, what's the tag currently working on? Uh, we do a lot of pondering deep questions and having deep thoughts about the web, uh, but primarily we focus on writing things. Uh, a lot of our output in terms of documents tends to be things called findings, uh, where the tag will have a particular idea or a particular opinion that it wants to express. And so we write that down in the form of a finding. We also have other kinds of documents, other outputs, and I'll talk about a few of those. Most of the output of the tag comes in the form of design reviews. So this is a little bit harder to quantify, because generally our design reviews are written up in GitHub issue registries. Uh, they, are, they consist of uh, information that we're imparting to other spec authors uh, and questions that we're asking, answers that we're receiving. They're more conversational in nature, um, but I'll get into that as well. We also do joint work with other groups, which can lead to publication of documents. Uh, the security and privacy questionnaire is one example of that. And we play a role in cross-organizational liaisons, especially uh, where that liaison work has to do with some kind of architectural element of the web platform. HTTP would be a good example where we've, in the past, done a lot of work together with the HTTP working group, especially when we were in the process of moving to uh, a, uh, the development of HTTP2. Um, we also have done some developer community engagement, although in the current situation, uh, we're not able to do that as much, obviously, because that has been predicated on the idea that we're meeting in different places around the world. And so we would take that opportunity to also engage with developers around the world. So that segues nicely into, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how do we tag during a pandemic? Um, I think this might be useful to anybody who's running any kind of enterprise, but especially W3C groups and trying to keep W3C groups up and running during uh, the current situation that we have, or we might be used to meeting face-to-face -face on a regular cadence. Uh, it's quite useful to think about how that now can take place, at least temporarily, on a purely virtual environment. 
obviously one of those, uh, one evidence of that has been the development of the, or the transition from of the AC uh, meeting into a purely virtual meeting, which you're experiencing now. So you can feedback on how relevant and how uh, happy you are with that approach. Um, as far as the tag goes, we're really continuing our cadence of weekly meetings. And we actually have four weekly video calls uh, that are, we have three plenary calls and one uh, breakout call, or one uh, plenary, sorry, we have three breakout calls and one plenary call. Um, the breakout calls are really for discussing particular issues, and that's where we, where we do most of our work around design reviews. We break those out into those breakout sessions so that we can have more involved discussions about particular issues. And those calls are at different times to accommodate different time zones. So we actually have three different calls, and the idea is that every TAG member should be attending at least two of those calls, uh, because one of them is probably gonna be at a time that is not very convenient for them. And then we also have one plenary call, which is intended for all TAG members to attend. Um, and during the plenary call, we read out what happened during the breakouts, but we also do other work of the TAG, um, especially focusing on documents. So for our face-to-face, -face, we have shifted to a virtual face-to-face -face with a five-day schedule. Um, we're actually having that uh, also uh, in May, uh, the week after the virtual uh, AC meeting. Um, so all of those five day uh, of meetings will be half day sessions, which will be at different times again to allow for different time zones. By the way, we're using jitsi.org, which is an open source web RTC implementation for all of our calls with reasonably good results. Um, there is still some issues around browser compatibility with Jitsi. Um, they're working on it, the different browsers are working on it. But in general, we're having a pretty good experience using Jitsi um, for all of our calls. So segueing to talking a little bit about design reviews and which we call the tag heart, the tag's heartbeat. Um, all of these design reviews take place in our design review repo in the issues, uh, the issues registry. Um, and they're intended for people that want to request a review from the tag. They want to request us to take a look at the work that they're doing. Ideally, uh, that is happening in the design phase, which is why we call them design reviews. Um, however, we do have three different issue templates. And the way that people create, an issue, create a design review, they initiate a design review with us is to open up an issue um, at which point they are presented with three different issue templates, one for an early design review. Um, so if, they, if the spec developers have an idea, but probably not in implementation yet, or maybe they're very only very early in, in the phase of implementation, um, they may not have a clear idea of where in W3C or where uh, elsewhere, uh, what venue this is gonna go into. <clears throat> that could be a good, candidate for an early design review, where you just want to get the tag's opinion. We also have a specification review for where, for specifications that are further along in the, in the development process. They could be already <coughs> in a uh, design, they could be already in uh, spec development within YCG or within a community group or within a working group. Um, we also have uh, a template for dispute resolution which is specifically where somebody in a working group, ideally the chair, but it could be somebody else, wants to get the tag's opinion on a dispute uh, that's currently happening in a working group or between two working groups. When you're requesting a design review or a specification review, we ask you to write an explainer. And we have a whole document which is linked from the link that I provided below tag that w3.org slash work mode, which explains what an explainer is. There's been a little bit of confusion about the explainer. So just to reiterate um, what I have been telling a lot of people 
the explainer is not something that we want you to write for a tag review. It is not intended solely for the purpose of the tag to help us review whatever you're building. We've encouraged people to write an explainer because we feel like it's good practice to write an explainer. And the, the explainer, the idea of the explainer is to explain what the thing is that's being written in clear language. So that's why we really encourage people to start with user needs. Think about what the user need is that you are trying to solve or to service with this new technology. Um, that usually helps to clarify for people reading the specification or reading the explainer what it is that they're reading, why this technology is being produced. We also have a lot of questions that we like to ask in terms of you know, what is the venue, what is the approach here, what, is the, uh, what other technologies have been uh, considered, um, that kind of thing. So there's a, there's a kind of template that we ask people to follow. Um, and I'd be more than happy to talk to any group chairs or any members of the AC or anybody uh, to clarify any about anything about this in, term, uh, in terms of how we think explainers should be written, uh, because we think they can be a very useful and powerful tool for people that are developing specifications. So what happens during a tag review? Um, one tag member will usually step up and own the issue, but usually it's two tag members that come and assign themselves at least to, the, to each particular issue. Um, we then will likely invite uh, somebody to, to join us, maybe on a call or maybe at the face-to-face -face, or maybe just in the discussion that's on the issue itself. Um, the, whoever raised the tag issue will get live feedback from us, either in our GitHub issue or in their issues or in a way that they prefer to receive it. <clears throat> and if appropriate, we'll issue a more formal feedback document. Um, we haven't really felt the need to do that recently. We've been more focusing on putting our feedback into our own issues or into other people's GitHub issues. And we found that to be a very effective way of communicating and getting our feedback across. So you can find the current work of the tag, which includes all the design reviews that we're doing, links to uh, how to work with the tag, and also our meetings repo uh, at linked off from tag.w3.org. I'd like to mention the meetings repo for a second. If you're the kind of person that wants to find out what the tag is working on in a, on a weekly basis, you can always go and look at our agendas. Uh, which are produced on a weekly basis, usually the week before uh, the um, tag meetings uh, are happening. Um, and those are all posted onto our GitHub and our, and our meeting uh, minutes are also all posted onto GitHub in markdown format um, after the meetings occur. So usually we are compiling all of our minutes into one document, which includes the, all the breakouts and the plenary minutes. <clears throat> and um, then we are uh, posting that in one place. So I wanted to take a second to talk about client side API uh, design principles. This is a document that we have been working on for quite a while. Um, and we've just recently put more work into it. So we're very happy to be able to share it with you now. Um, this is basically a document which rolls up a lot of the work that we've been doing in our API and in our, in our design reviews. Um, and it brings it into one document. It's something that we've been working on and adding to for a while, uh, but we've just been doing some rather large uh, pieces of um, additional work to, to uh, bring more information and more principles and more, uh, I don't know, the kind of wisdom of the tag uh, into this document. Um, it's designed primarily for spec developers. So it's a document that we wouldn't normally expect web developers to be reading, although we're certainly happy to get their feedback, but it's more to do with when you're designing a specification in particular an API, but it doesn't need to be an API. Um, it's a, uh, we would like uh, people to read this. And in fact, 
we ask when people are submitting a request for review, we ask them, have they read this document? Uh, it's also a place where we collect up good practice that comes uh, up in the context of our design reviews, and it's been gradually taking on principles from other sources. So what's an example of that? For instance, uh, you can see right at the bottom of this page, um, underneath the uh, 1.1 within a client-side API design principles, um, we've actually taken some of the text to that uh, about priority of constituencies, um, which was from the HTML design uh, principles document. Um, and we've brought that over into our tagged design principles. Uh, we thought that was important to have uh, in a, in a, a more up-to-date, refreshed document. Um, in the process, we've also linked through to our ethical web principles document where appropriate. So where we think there's a principle that we've articulated in this document that is related to or has underpinnings in the ethical principles, uh, we've called that out as well so that we can be clear about where we're, um, why some of these things exist and how they relate to the ethical web principles document, which I'll talk about in a second. So we've also, as I mentioned, updated the uh, tag ethical web principles. So in particular, uh, I'd like to point out that each principle now uh, includes individually linkable uh, anchor. Um, and as I mentioned, we use this document in the context of our design reviews, and we also um, reference this in our design guidelines document, the principles that I just was talking about. We've also, last year, a little bit earlier last year, but I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. We updated our security and privacy self-review questionnaire document. And that was work that Lucas, uh, who, who uh, was on the tag up until late last year, um, concluded with the PING group, um, in, and which we're very happy about, actually. It's a document which really exhaustively gets people, gets spec developers to think about all the security and privacy issues that they might have within any particular specification. And the idea is, and again, this is something that we ask uh, spec developers who are, who are requesting a design review, we ask them not only to read this document, but actually to write a response document to us um, and leave it somewhere that we can reference and read. Uh, so we found that this has been really useful. We've gotten a lot of good feedback from spec developers that they find this kind of information useful because it helps them to think about privacy and security of their uh, specification. It helps them to think about uh, those topics, which may not be topics which are the closest to their, to their way of thinking, but it helps them to really think about these in a very structured way. So I encourage you to take a look at this as well. Um, finally, I just wanted to talk about, we're taking a new approach to cross repo issues tracking. So this is largely taking advantage of some work that W3C team have been doing uh, really great work, in my opinion, on um, <clears throat> stitching together the different issues registries within different specifications developments areas that are happening on GitHub. Um, so in particular, there's a concept of horizontal review. Tag review is definitely part of horizontal review. Um, and now uh, within uh, a special horizontal review tracker uh, that W3C has put together, uh, you can see which issues tag is keeping an eye on. This allows us to close our design review issue so that we can actually close an issue where we feel like we provided the feedback that we wanted to provide, but we can still keep an eye on open issues that have been that have been opened up against another specifications uh, issue tracker or issue list, um, just so that we can see and kind of keep tabs on where our, where our feedback has gone and whether or not it's being implemented or how it's being implemented and that, that kind of thing. So we can keep, keep track of things like that. 
we've been very happy to see that approach come out of the W3 team, W3C team. So anyway, that's about it from me. Um, I definitely look forward to your questions. Uh, you can get in touch with me at dan at torgo.com or d.applequist at samsung.com uh, if you want to by email or you can follow us at w3c tag on twitter uh, or indeed you can get in touch with me on the new w3c slack uh, developer engagement uh, slack channel as well um, anything works and i'd be happy to answer any questions you have uh, either online or offline however you want. So thank you again for your participation in this virtual meeting and for your attention. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in person in the next advisory committee meeting uh, 